Over the years, there have been countless discussions about backdoors built into Linux, most notably from the US and the NSA. And there's even this famous clip of Linus Torvalds and various other people at LinuxCon 2013. Yeah, so this question, have, have any of you been approached by the US for a backdoor? And you have Torvald sitting here. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, I think we all know exactly uh, how that conversation's gone. Now, he's denied that ever happened. He said it was a joke years later. Most people don't believe that, and most people would be very surprised if it's never actually happened. Especially since there have been backdoors in Linux that nobody noticed, like BVP47, an NSA-linked backdoor that sat in the codebase undetected for 10 years. And if we know about one of them, that means there are likely more of them. And there have certainly been attempts, like this one back in 2003, and this one with OpenSSL, where some people are saying, you know, maybe it was a backdoor, maybe it was a bug, no one's really sure. But that's attempting to inject a backdoor at the project level. What if instead we do it at a much lower level? At a level so low, the developer and maintainer of a project will never notice there is actually a problem. What if I make it so you will never trust your computer again? Well, all the way back in 1984, Ken Thompson did exactly that with what has been dubbed years later as the Ken Thompson hack. And for this concept, he received the ACM Turing Award. This was explained in Reflections on Trusting Trust. To what extent should one trust a statement that a program is free of Trojan horses? Perhaps it is more important to trust the people who wrote the software. This is going to seem like a really basic concept. But as I start to unpack it, you're going to realize how wide-reaching the effects are and how little you should actually trust your computer. So, Ken made a modification to his C compiler. Most of the time, it works exactly like it should. You put code in, it compiles it like it should, you get the output you would expect. Except for one program. If it tries to compile a program called login, instead of compiling it correctly, it intentionally miscompiles it. What it does is make it so it accepts the password expected by the user and a separate password only known to Ken. Using either of those passwords, you could then log into the system. This, whilst being a very simple one, is a backdoor. It allows a third party to access your system who shouldn't be able to access it. The problem is it's a little bit too simple. The only way the backdoor happens is if you compile your login command with the version of the C compiler that Ken Thompson has. So if you just never use his compiler, you're never gonna have this backdoor. And such blatant code would not go undetected for long. Even the most casual perusal of the source of the C compiler would raise suspicions. But the point isn't to just leave the backdoor in the compiler source code for everybody to see. What you do is first we compile the modified source with the normal C compiler to produce a bugged binary. So you take the source code for the C compiler with the backdoor and compile it with your regular C compiler. Now you have a bugged C compiler. We install this binary as the official C compiler. We can now remove the bugs from the source of the compiler and the new binary will reinsert the bugs whenever it is compiled. Of course, the logging command will remain bugged with no trace in the source anywhere. So now what you have is you have the source code for the C compiler. This has no backdoor in it whatsoever. You have a binary that was compiled from the C source code when it still had the backdoor in it. And now that binary is going to reinsert backdoors in anything it compiles. Right, I know what you're thinking. This sounds pretty stupid, and you're probably wondering why Ken Thompson actually won an award for this, or why he even talked about it in the first place. This seems like a pretty easy problem to avoid. Don't use the buggy Ken Thompson C compiler, compile your C compiler from the source code you know doesn't actually have a vulnerability in it. But doing that is basically impossible. 
This is the real point of the paper. The paper isn't about this very simple example. The paper is about software trust and software security. Let's look at a more real world example. So most people out there, whether we're talking Windows, Mac OS or Linux, are going to download software binaries. I'm going to focus on Linux just because it makes the example easier. So when you download a software binary, you are downloading it from your distro maintainers. And the reason you're using that distro is you feel the distro maintainers can be trusted. And maybe they are to be trusted. Maybe every distro maintainer out there only has the best intentions. But do you know if their compiler is safe? Maybe their compiler has a Trojan inside of it that inserts backdoors into everything it compiles. Maybe to make sure this doesn't happen, the developer compiled their own compiler. But here you go. Now we're starting to see the problem. Because what if that compiler had a Trojan inside of it that inserted backdoors into further applications? Okay, maybe they run through the application with a debugger to make sure that nothing weird and out of place is happening. But how do you know the debugger wasn't compiled in a way that if it comes across this back door, it just hides the back door from the debugger? Okay, how about we just disassemble the compiler, look at a hex dump, and just see if we can see any problems? Well, that's not going to work either, because how do you know your disassembler, hex dump tool, and editor aren't compromised and aren't hiding the problem from you? Okay, I'm throwing out every piece of software and instead I'm writing my own compiler in assembly and I'm going to compile the code then because then I know it is going to be clean. Except you don't because how do you know your CPU is safe? How do you know that there isn't a vulnerability in your CPU that intentionally injects a backdoor into everything you compile and then hides the backdoor if you try to examine the code on your computer? Okay, maybe it's just my computer and my architecture. I'm going to build a completely separate system with all new hardware from completely different vendors. Well, how do you know those vendors haven't also been compromised and they're still injecting the exact same problem? If a Trojan is injected at a low enough point in your system, you have absolutely no ability to do anything about it and it can hide itself absolutely perfectly. You have no idea if right now everything you do has a backdoor inserted into it. The point of Ken's experiment is to show it's basically impossible to actually build a secure system. Really the only way to do so is to build everything yourself. And I don't mean using consumer hardware, I mean actually building it yourself. The only way you're going to get a clean compiler executable now is to build your computer yourself out of TTL logic you salvaged from some museum somewhere, then code up a set of basic binary tools sufficient to assemble assembler, then bootstrap from the source of all the modern tools. Basically, you have to build a computer from the circuitry level if you actually want it to be known 100% secure. Only then. Only once you've examined every line of code on the system you know is safe and you compile that code on your known safe system and you have binaries that you know are safe, only at that point can you really say you have a safe and secure system. The moral is obvious. You can't trust code that you did not create yourself, especially code from companies that employ people like me. No amount of source level verification or scrutiny will protect you from using untrusted code. If we go back to that problem from the start, let's say for example the NSA or one of the other three letter organizations goes to Intel, goes to AMD and says, hey, we want you to insert a Trojan into your CPU that inserts a backdoor into every application such that if a user tries to examine if that backdoor exists, it will not be shown to the user. You don't know if something like that doesn't already exist and you have absolutely no ability to check if it is happening. You have no idea if something like that doesn't already exist. That is the point of reflections on trust and trust. To what extent should one trust a statement that a program is free of Trojan horses? Perhaps it is more important to trust the people who wrote the software. This is why he won the ACM Turing Award. The only thing that puts a giant hole in this is it implies someone actually has the competence to make it happen. But it could be on a much smaller scale. Maybe you have an encrypted chat application and the encryption keys are just being sent to your local government agency but being hidden in some other sort of packet that makes it really difficult to spot. But hey, 
I'm sure we can come up with examples of backdoors all day. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you have some way to defeat this without going all the way down to the circuitry level, I would definitely like to know. I've thought about this for quite a while, and I, I've not been able to come up with anything. So I would like to hear your opinion. Let me know your thoughts down below. If you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one over these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon subscribers, the Libero Pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And Ken Thompson is an awesome dude. Go check out some of his work.